Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to kind of complete the Guardians of Gahul, Gahul trilogy by Catherine Lasky. So what I mean by that is this is um, the book we're reviewing here is the War of the Ember, which is technically the end of the series to an extent. She has a prequel series or not a prequel series, a prequel book that I will review later, um, which has to do with the background of Soren and the band's mentor, um, Elza Bub. Um, I can never pronounce his name. So you get his backstory. There's also a collection of short stories and then there's a guide to Gahul, which I will cover as well. But this is the official end of the tale that has been going on. So this is the book 15 and the completion of this. So what goes on here is, of course, Corin is not happy. He doesn't want this stupid ember. He's sick of it. It's too much responsibility. It's too much power. People are obsessed with it. The other thing that's going on is the owl who they had ousted um, previously, the blue owl that had come from the uh, Middle Kingdom has gotten with Nera because they kicked him out. He's gotten with Nera. They've been talking to the dragon owls back in the Middle Kingdom and slowly brooding um, basically the evil mutant owl creatures from the past. So they've been, uh, and not to mention they're starting to uh, be able to fly because again they were supposed to be preening their feathers to prevent them from being able to actually fly. Some of them have been, along with some traitor servants, have been hiding this and they've gotten over, um, they've gotten into the the Five Kingdoms and they're trying to hatch these eggs. So they're preparing to basically build up an army. And back at the old university, Bess is attacked. So some owl comes claiming he wants to die under the bells and then sneaks and tries to kill her to get the ember, which is there. So she flies and leaves for the first time and goes and tells them what the heck is going on. So Soren and the band, along with some other friends and expert flyers, prepare to go and move the ember. Now, the original idea is to move it to the Middle Kingdoms, but the owl who's kind of friends with them, who's there, goes to ask, and they're like, nope. And that's how, of course, they find out what's going on with these uh, dragon owls. And of course, one of the younger servants, the page, uh, goes for a superior because she realizes something's bloody up and nobody listens, and then she goes to the head of person who's in charge and reveals, yeah, trouble. It's like they're, they're, they're brooding eggs and they're being able to fly and yeah, um, trouble. So obviously they're not gonna take the ember there. They are, however, start missing an army of their own to come and join the five kingdoms. And Corin sends out Odalissa and her mate and they go off to seek information. They set up a, basically a relay system of information. So now the other part of this is a puffin brings them information. So normally puffins are very, very dumb. This one realizes, he, he hears this blue owl and Nira, and it's like, this is important. So first he goes and tells a polar bear, quite unusual, but he goes and, tell a, goes and tells a polar bear. And then he, then basically the polar bear says, you need to go talk to the owls. This is an owl thing, go talk to the owls. And he goes and talks to the owls and gives them the information. They get it out of him. That's when uh, Olissa and her mate go north and then they set up this relay, this relay system. And then they figure out what they're gonna do with the um, ember. And basically Corrin decides once he figures out what the heck Zanira's up to is he's going to use it as bait to lure them out because they've gone to this ice palace which had been his predecessor's um, family's birthplace and that's where they're planning to birth the eggs. So they, he wants to lure Nira out. And then the other thing that starts going on again, the polar bear goes and tells the wolves and then Corrin goes and talks to the wolves and he intends to basically drop the ember back in the volcanoes. Um, so and they start gathering everybody. So they are. They decide, okay, we realize that um, this blue owl has been missing another army. They've been gathering a lot of other people, giving recruits. So Corn and his people start gathering one, an army of their own owls, both north and from the 
uh, other five, the other four kingdoms here, they get the polar bears involved, they get the wolves involved, they get the puffins involved, and then one of their trackers goes and gets both the seagulls and the crows involved. So yeah, you have end up, and then they basically get this army, this enemy army trapped uh, in between these kind of two pillars near these volcanoes in the beyond. And Corrin has dropped the ember back in the volcanoes. And what basically part of the conclusion of this is Soren with, uh, well, Corrin, Soren's kind of trying to guard him. They don't realize he's dropped the ember. They don't realize he's already gotten rid of it. Um, but, and of course the wolves who had been there, they had been healed once he took the ember out. They go back to being injured, but that's something they choose to be. They could have left, it's made known that they could have left at any time, left the volcanoes at any time during Corrin's reign, they chose to stay. So if they had not been, if they had not been there, they would have remained completely whole wolves. So Corrin leads his mother Nero with a fake ember. Uh, along with the blue owl, and essentially he commits suicide. Uh, he's, he kills himself and his mother, and I think possibly the blue owl. But this is a massive battle, so it's very complex. There's a lot going on here that I'm not really going into, uh, because honestly you should read this book. It, it's a very, very good series, and it, it's taken, I think, when you look at the back of the book, some of the stuff is taken from some of uh, Churchill's, Winston Churchill's speeches, but the battle itself is actually something to do with these Spartans. So she's taking inspiration from this uh, this Spartan battle with the um, with the Persians. So where you had a much smaller uh, army defeating a much larger one, and and because they kind of, they kind of lure them into a place where they can attack them, and so it's it's a very interesting again. You have wolves, you have polar bears, you have puffins, you have owls, you have both seagulls and crows all attacking these other owls and these mutant owls at once. Now the other things is the wolves, per corn, go after their these uh, dragon owls are, drag, are coaxed out of this cave, at least most of them, they go and destroy these eggs. So they prevent these mutant owls from existing because they destroy these eggs before they can hatch. And all this is happening on an eclipse. Because of course it does. <laughs> you have to have strange weather going on. So it's a very interesting, massive battle. And again, Corrin chooses to die. He, in fact, he tells uh, Namira, who's the wolf that uh, he's friends with, that he would like to come back as a wolf. He would. He doesn't. He wants to give up his wings. So he essentially is done with his life, and he dies. And essentially, Soren becomes king. It's like this is going to be his time, and because we had this big, basically the end of the Ember. So I'm assuming it was kind of destroyed when he puts it back in the fire for some reason. So it, it ends this, and so there's no more trying to bring this magic back. Because the, the reason Corrin didn't want this is because it's too much. It's too much power. It's too much magic. It's drawing the dark, and you will essentially. Nothing will ever be safe because somebody's always going to be coming after it. So he wants it to end and he's kind of done. So, and he's a relatively young owl. Again, Soren's his uncle. So, um, but it, it's an interesting conclusion to this story. Soren becomes king. He takes over and that's what, that's the choice of all the other owls. He chooses, they choose him. It's like, it's his time to take over. So that's really the conclusion of this book and again this series. There is again the prequel series and there are some short stories. I have not gotten those yet, so those are coming. Um, I'm working on reading um, their mentors um, backstory now. That's I believe uh, The Legends I believe is the title of the book. I don't actually have it physically copy uh, on me right now. Um, it's somewhere because I started reading it today. So that's really it for this, this review. If you like what you see, be sure, sure to like and subscribe. Again, I'll be finishing up that series. I may cover some more of uh, Catherine, Lask, uh, Catherine Lasky's um, other books. She has some books on the wolves and the um, polar bears and a few other things. She's, she's a decent author, so she has a wide variety of books. So I may do that at some point. Um, I believe my next series is going to be a Meg Cabot series. Now I've already covered the Princess Diaries and the notebooks of a middle school princess, so I'm going to cover something else of hers. 
um, just out of curiosity. But be sure to check out the rest of the channel. I have a wide variety of book series, individual books, various different films. I'm probably not going to cover the owl, the Gahul owl film. I've heard it's very, very bad. <laughs> it just doesn't do anything. So, but be sure to check out the rest of the channel. Leave a positive comment if you have one. And thank you.